Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessa, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy freaking uh, Tuesday, happy freaking Thursday, Thursday, April 4th, 2024, as we come together to talk about an interesting news piece that just hit our desk moments ago. Yes, we do have a UFO news update, more importantly about the Lou Elizondo. Yes, based on communications from within the DOD. They've been monitoring every single word that Luella Zondo has been saying in the public. We've seen it for a couple of things in this instance, but take no heed. Yeah, for all the people out there who are doubting Lou and saying, oh, Lou is this or Lou is that, I have to ask a question. If he was one of their own, would they be watching every single word they, he'd be saying? Maybe yes, maybe no. I'm going to say not. On that note, I want to go ahead and welcome you all to this episode of Disclosure tonight. We've got a great doc to go through here tonight. We've got Mike in the back. Mike, how you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm doing well, Thomas. Uh, this should be an interesting story to cover for the public. And you're right. There are a lot of people out there that claim that Lou is a disinformation agent. If that really was the case, uh, why would they be surveilling him like this? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, maybe to go ahead and look at what he's saying, and watching the company man, watching what he's saying. But I think the, the how it's being looked at, and we'll go through all the different documents. And we even have a really interesting piece in here. We have loose resignation letter. You know, we've heard about it many times. We've we've uh, heard uh, Lou talk about it and others talk about it. Well, we're going to bring up the actual letter and go through it as well. It's an interesting night, to say the least. Well, we do have one additional person in the back. Neil, good to have you here, my friend. Hey, Thomas. Uh, of course, happy to be here. And uh, interesting, yeah. interesting show tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So let's jump into this if we can. Let me get off to the desktop document. Where is it at? All right, here we go. Yeah, interesting. In the letter, yeah, we a FOIA guy. You, you got to understand who that is, Mike. John Greenwald, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah that's john has been busy to say the absolute least but yes the letter is coming from mr john greenwald of the black vault you know i heard matt ford talking about the uh adult toys section and the toys he got of mitch mcconnell interesting person to say the least <laughs> oh yeah that was some clip if you know what i mean so yeah. uh, he's got a foyer uh foyer react interesting thing john just bring this out now i guess Maybe not all of it, but some of it. Response was June 28th, 2022. Yeah, that was a while ago. That was a while ago. But interesting things nonetheless. Let's get through this and have some fun with it. All right. So we're looking at, I uh, found this in my Apple, Apple News on my iPad, and I took a photo uh, regarding... Uh, this is going to Randolph, uh, Randolph R. Stone, who is the Ass Assistant Inspector General, the IG for Evaluations, Space Intelligence, Engineering, and Oversight. Nothing kind of see in this picture. Of course, it's redacted. Oh, but look, what do we have here? We actually have the resignation letter of Lou Elizondo. Let's go through this. Uh, memorandum for record. Come on, highlight this. There you go. Subject, letter of resignation and deferred retirement, Mr. Secretary. It's been my sincere honor. Remember, this is the resignation letter from Lou Elizondo. I love it. All right. It's been my sincere honor. Let me get my camera set up right here. Here we go. Sincere honor and pleasure to have served with some of America's finest men and women, both in peace and in and war. For over 22 years, I've been blessed to learn from and work with world-class leadership, you certainly being among the very best. With that in mind, bureaucratic challenges and inflexible mindsets continue to plague the department at all levels. This is particularly uh, true regarding a controversial topic of anomalous aerospace threats. Despite overwhelming evidence at both the unclassified and classified levels, certain individuals in the department remain staunchly opposed to further research on what could be a tactical threat to our pilots, sailors, and soldiers, and perhaps even an existential threat to our national security. 
In many instances, there seems to be a direct correlation the phenomenon exhibits with respect to our nuclear military capabilities. Uh-oh, hold on, let me get back to that. The department must take serious the many accounts by the Navy and other services of unusual aerial systems interfering with military weapons platforms and displaying beyond next-generation capabilities. Underestimating or ignoring these potential threats is not in the best interest of the department, no matter the level of political contention. There remains a vital need to ascertain the capability and intent of these phenomena for the benefit for the benefit. Is it working here right? I think so. Of, I have to fix this over on this side, the armed forces and the nation. For this reason, effective 4 October 2017, I humbly submit my resignation in hopes it will encourage you to ask the questions. Who else knows? What are talking about? Our adversaries, what are their capabilities? And why aren't, actually, why aren't we spending more time and effort on the issue? Back to that in one second. As I transition to the new chapter of my life, Please know it has been an honor and privilege of a lifetime to serve with you. Rest assured, no matter the path of my life may lead me, I will always have the best interests of the department and the American people as my guiding principle. There you go. There you go. I see something on there. I see something on there. How did he sign it? Director of National Programs. Director of National Manager Programs, Special Management Staff. Well, that doesn't sound like a tip, but it is a branch, probably. Yeah, we'll have to figure that out. That tip was run under. We'll yeah, have that's to interesting. Figure... Yeah, because I haven't seen that before. Yeah, but. You have to take serious accounts. Okay, uh, interfering with military platforms, underestimating, ignoring the potential of these threats. Okay, national correction the remains a vital assertion. There was something in here that I was seeing. Basically, they're talking about who else knows and what are their capabilities. Let me go ahead and take that and put that in blue. Who else knows and what are the capabilities? You know what's missing? To be a critic, but that's okay because we're all critics and seeing something. You know what's missing from that statement, Mike? What's that, Thomas? What are they doing here? Well, yeah, you, you're right about the first part of that where he says, who else knows? Yeah. I think he's talking about foreign adversaries. Well, of don't course, you? that's what I said, yeah. Right. And then he goes into the phenomenon, what are their capabilities? So when Grush said that we're in the middle of a Cold War oh, yeah. in reverse engineering with other uh, foreign adversaries, Lou is addressing it back here in October 4th, yeah. 2017. He's calling it out right. He's calling he's it out. He's confirming what yeah. David Grush said. Yeah, he, he's well, right there. Well, David Grush is confirming what Lou said. Right. And and Lou said it back in 2017. Yep. So they kind of corroborating each other. Well, one document washes the other one's hand, for that matter. It's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's a very good thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. So let's get on into this document now. What's going to continue on in different parts of the doc as we go through this? It's kind of interesting because we're going to see a lot of emails coming through. Uh, I probably show it over here a little bit easier. Um, there's going to be a lot of, let me turn this off, view, let me hide the thumbnails, I don't need to see them, view, 
sidebar. There we go. Uh oh, a little too wide. Bring it back a little bit. Okay. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now we, what we have is we're going to be seeing a bunch of different articles and things talking about people who are bringing up Elizondo. One of these is coming from within. Yes, Neil. Uh, Kelly was just pointing out uh, the first paragraph says overwhelming unclassified evidence. Um, is that sightings? I mean, is he referring to or what? Uh, that's a long second paragraph. Uh, uh, or first paragraph? No, classified okay. levels, uh, strongly existential national security threats, correlation of phenomena exhibits, uh, underestimating the ignoring the potential threats, best interests in the department. Yeah, it's not in here. Okay, she, she thought she found that. No worries. No, uh, first paragraph says overwhelming. No, it's not. All right. All right, let's move on. Thanks for that tip. <laughs> Sometimes we need glasses. I know I need them most of the time. All right, let's go ahead and have some fun with this. Next one, getting into it is conversation of OLAC Wednesday. Please uh, see the below article and excerpts from the New Yorker coverage of UAPs. Well, the New Yorker magazine had an article. Oh my goodness, where they're talking about up. Uh, they're talking about on May 9th, two thousand one. Greer had the National Press Club. When is this, when is this article, uh, this email from May 2nd, 2021? Three years ago? A little bit more than three years ago, I think. Um, talking about, I actually have to say, the National Press Club in 2021 was actually pretty decent. Have you seen that one, Mike? No, I haven't. You know, that was one of the first ones where Robert Sales came out. There were a bunch of whistleblowers who had seen things actually came out and talked in front of the National Press Club. You know, the Greer was putting putting together. Interesting. So back then, it was you know talking about uh, everything that had gone on. Greer that he had actually founded the Disclosure Project back in '93. This is before things I think kind of got spun out of control to a degree. So anyway, talking about Greer and everything, talking about his pseudoscience, let's get past that, get down to the next page within it. Okay, good morning, ma'am. According to the article, the DOD stood up a task force some time ago. I don't like blue, sorry, it's got to go yellow, easier to read here. Good morning, ma'am. According to the article, the DOD stood up a task force uh, some years ago. Not sure who was given Go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Not sure who was given the responsibility of reporting. It seems like the report is well underway and will certainly be done and reported to Congress before our work is completed. Oh, wow. Coming from someone in the DODIG to Marguerite Garrison. Got to figure out who she is. Uh, she's, again, from the DODIG. So it looks like the DODIG was doing investigations Back in 2021. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. So, all right. So this is warning sensitive inspector general sensitive information. You're really not going to let me select that area. Nope. 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 This information is contained in this email, blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit. So they're not going to tell us what it was, but there was an article attached. So... I wonder who I watched it. I wonder who in the department is doing the report sharing Mr. Stone's crew is just getting started. Not sure who Mr. Stone's crew is, but let's move on. Uh, subject UFO is regularly spotted in the U.S. restricted airspace. Report on uh, UA, the phenomenon next month. Uh, 60 Minutes aired a segment last evening. So who is this going from? This is going from the DODIG. To other people within the DODIG. Interesting. They're sending along the words what everyone's saying. Who are who are they watching? Well, Lou Elizondo, first of all, they're taking every single word that he said and they're actually transposing it. Now he watched this last night. So you know, Mike, someone had to sit there and type this up word for word. It just doesn't happen magically, does it? Especially back then, no. It's it, not like it, they can someone, drop it into a box and the and the a auto AI is going to kick it out. No, 
not back in 2017. Right, no. 2017. So it's safe to say back in, actually this is in 2017, this is in 2021, I believe. This is in May 17th, 2021. This is his appearance on 60 Minutes. Right. Someone went and transposed, got the transcript put together of every single word that Lou Elizondo said. Yeah, someone transcribed it. Transcribed it and sent it across to other people within the DODIG. So we've all seen, a lot of us have all seen, wasn't the 60 Minutes episode the first time, if you want to call it, National news was kind of ta- uh, a news national news program was taking UFO serious. Yes, back then. Back then, yeah. More jeers than anything, but the information was out there. They they they're watching the words of, of course, Lou Elizondo. Going on a bit further, they've got the words of Ryan Graves. Now, if the interesting thing about Ryan Graves. He also worked for the military as a pilot, and he's also under certain NDAs of what he can and can't talk about. So let's just watch every single word that Ryan Graves is going to say. And that goes on. Who else do they have every single word of? Alex Dietrich. Now, Ryan Graves was in the Air Force, I think, on the East Coast, wasn't he? Yes. Or was, was he in the Navy or the Air, Air Force? Maybe Navy. 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 And you have Alex Dietrich, who was part of the Tic Tac incident. She was with um, David Fravor. David Fravor, yeah. We had Kevin Day, who was down on the radar watching all this stuff live. We don't hear enough from Dave these days. Uh, let's yeah, move a on. A lot back and forth. of Again, Elizondo. So they're very interested in every word that went on. And you know what? Guaranteed. They're going to read every single word that has been transcribed for a reason. Because they're going to watch to make sure people don't talk outside of their lanes. We've said this before. They watch every single thing that I say. If I lie about one thing, they're going to pull. They're going to go ahead and pull my uh, his security clearances. Now, quick thing: two ed six six six. Why no regular shows anymore? Uh, I guess they couldn't put up signs. There hasn't been a lot of stuff going on in Disclosure, and I'll make this clear, to put together a two-hour show every night when you're struggling to find stuff. You know, we could have brought out and talked about the mummies tonight. (laughs) But there's some stuff that Mike's laughing at. Other stuff I'm looking at it saying, well, uh, uh, she looks pretty fucking good to me. Some of the stuff maybe they're not. Either way, I'm toning down. I've got some health issues and other different stuff that I've been dealing with, and my body needs some time to uh, get in shape and everything else and deal with a bunch of different things. So uh, I've got some chronic health issues. I am disabled, by the way, folks. Have been for a while. Uh, you just hide it. You just deal with it. It's all oh, you lose a little bit less. You try to find a little bit more. Hence doing disclosure tonight. But either way, I'm doing less shows these days. If disclosure picks up and there's something to talk about, we'll pop up. We'll, we'll be there. We'll be there. I actually got to thank. Uh, oh, Doctor Tim Taylor is in the chat from he Taiwan. Is. Great to see that you're doing all right, Tim. Yeah, he said where he was. They didn't really get hit that hard. It was more on the West Coast. Good. So he's okay. Yeah. So I'm okay. Is is okay as okay can be. I I just need to take care of myself. I've been putting a lot of time into this, so we're going into this, having some fun, getting there, and we're going to pop out tonight as soon as we're done with this one piece. A little bit reduced show, a little bit less overhead for me, more fun. And that's what we need. So on that note, hopefully that that answer, I think that kind of clarifies for everyone, right? I I certainly hope it answers the question. Yeah. Disclosure is dead right now. It's it's being rethunk from the inside of the government by the amount of pushback they're doing. It's like they changed course. And there's a lot of talk about the same stuff again and again. And a little bit different, but it's the same stuff. Like, you should uh, tell our audience what George Knapp has been reporting on today. Memes. 
memes, uh, funny video, funny videos, and other armed stuff. Armed robbery in yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah, that's what's being covered from the reporter who was talking about uh, disclosure from the American government to the people. Now he's talking about armed robberies in uh, L.A. today. Oh so. come on! He had a great video of a uh, of a lady going nuts on a uh, on a jet blue flight out of Vegas. Clearly, she had something that she shouldn't have had. So yeah, a little bit. So yeah. that's the kind of news stories he's covering. Yeah, no more parachuted uh, flares coming down over a, mil- a marine base. Yep. Hey. So yeah, that means disclosure is slowed down. It's slow down from every side. Yes. Maybe we'll get more news. Maybe we'll not. If not, when stuff happens, we'll pop on, we'll talk about it, and then we'll go on, go along our merry lives. That's but in right. the meantime, I'm not going to get stressed out and have to say, I need to find stuff to talk about. I need to find stuff to talk about. What are we going to talk about? First of all, I don't want to keep on talking about the same shit everyone else is talking about. Grand, someone will be talking about this. We could have spent the whole night talking about mummies, but oh, I'd, rather, I'd rather talk about this. It's a good topic. Your, yeah, your producer objected strongly to that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. Let's see what else we've got going here to shrink this. I'm gonna play it by ear as we're going through it, so it can make it readable for everybody. Or Brian has his hand up, Thomas. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. Oh no, I I know that I had talked with Mike about this the other night. That, um, and I and I use the analogy. You know, while the tide's coming in, it's it's the basically a receding into the ocean. I think we're going to get a tsunami um, of of information. So keep your health up. I think when Lou's a book drops, uh, we get a Grush's op ed. We get the new uh, Senate hearings, and some of these whistleblowers come forward, um, and, and we may even see some uh, some uh, field hearings with Rick's group. So there's going to be plenty to talk about later. I think. It's just going to come wham, bam, 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 bam later this year. Now, I know I'm being optimistic, but yeah. but I do believe that's going to happen. And so, Biggest yeah, we, piece of advice I can set to – I can help with everybody. Don't set your hopes too high because you're only going to be disappointed. It's like every single year we've had a UFO hearing. Oh, my God, we're going to have this hearing. Oh, my God, we're going to get all this information. Oh, my God, look what's in, in the uh, – um, NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, or the uh, intelligence, uh, the IA, Intelligence Authorization Act, where all that money goes into it, and we see all this great stuff like the historic report and all these things, and we're saying, wow, look at all the great stuff they're going to go ahead and give us. And what have we really gotten? We're getting a lot of empty promises. We're getting a lot of promises from even politicians about saying, we're going to have this, we're going to do this, we're going to do everything. My big magic word is when. And I'll get behind you, 100%. But if hopes and dreams were peaches and creams, the entire world would be covered in a giant peach cobbler. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, Brian, I hear you. We're going to get stuff, but you just have to temper your ex- expectations a bit. Still be excited. Oh, sure. I don't, yeah, no. I mean, I don't want anybody to, you know, but, put all their chips on the table for this. No. But but uh, I, I do I do believe in remaining optimistic, and I think that's kind of exactly what you're saying, Thomas. And, and just understand, I mean, you know, how many times have you, has everybody been let down their life by someone or something? Don't. And, the, and, and that's just a normal course of life. But, don't but, count but, your chickens before they, they hatch. hatch. Correct. But there's Bingo. nothing wrong with having your glass half full. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even if there is this big, deep, dark entity behind the U.S. government that's actually keeping disclosure from moving forward, that's not that's part of the NHI, yeah. <laughs> or not. And, and we just have to push these people along. That's part yep. of it, too. You know, give uh, them little nudges, make sure they know we're here. Yep, absolutely. So we got another email coming in here. Let's get through these. All right, this one is going to Margaret again. Actually, coming from Margaret. She's sending a lot of stuff to Randolph Stone. Subject is ex-official who revealed UFO project. <laughs> and what did she say? Uh, good 
weather today, good weather today, but then rain temps tomorrow, if the change of scenery will be good. What? Code. That looks like code. Good weather today, but then rain and cooler temps tomorrow. That is code. It's 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 a sentence that's non sequitur. It doesn't make sense. If the and change of follows, scenery will it, be good, if it, the change, right? yeah, if if the change of scenery will be good, what is that? A question? It really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But look at the response. Sounds awesome. I'm jealous. Of what? He didn't say anything. It's odd. It, it, it's definitely they don't, and they knew this could be foiled. So this, to me, I think that I believe they're speaking in code. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Because they knew this would be public potentially. I would have to say. No, I want to find. I'm fine. What you talking about, Willis? Let's see what that. We're okay. Roger blank. Roger, acknowledging it. So much they have to. They have to go ahead and redact it. Redacted. This week was as busy as three days, Marjorie. What the? F Either, yeah. Keep me in the loop, and I'll do the same when you get back from vacation. Let's catch up. How in the hell were they talking about vacation? It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. All right. This is completely redacted from Randolph Stone. So going back and forth, back and forth. Next one is coming from, from blank. Within the DOD IG. Going to Sean O'Donnell, Stephen Stebbins, blank, redacted, 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 Garrison Margaret. Oh, there's Gar there's Margaret again. Right there she is. They're not going to let me select it, but that's fine. Uh, and a bunch of them. Let's move on. Subject, same thing, talking about all FYSA. Uh, yep. We've got an article here that is from Brian Bender. Is he at Politico? Yeah, I believe so. He's either with Politico or he's with um, the War Zone. Either way, he's a writer. The article is ex UF UX official who revealed the UFO project uh, accuses Pentagon of disinformation campaign. Again, full text of the word of the interview with Lou Elizondo going across to everybody within the DOD IG. It's going to one, two, three unnamed individuals. So again, everything about Lou, what Lou is saying, is being monitored by the DOD IG. Now, if you remember, it was the DOD IG that played dirty with Grush, wasn't it, uh, Mike? Oh, they leaked like a sieve when uh, Grush made his complaint to them. Yeah. And then started to get retribution directly from DOD. So, oh, yeah. That right. IG's office is horrible. So those were the guys playing dirty pool, if you want to call it that. It was. They suck. Yeah, they do, don't they? They do. Oh, and that's not it. Where did, where did I hide them? Nope, that's not it. There we go.
You're not going to let me go. Phase Will, thank you very much, Phase Will, for that wonderful super chat. Keep pushing, guys. I was trying to bring out the little thing I have here of my disclosure. So I can bring him over to this. Let's just do a copy. Let me go back to here. Let me say paste reference. And it's not. Oh, well, we'll deal with it in a bit. All right. Thank you very much, Phase Will, for that wonderful super chat, my friend. Uh, every penny helps, I tell you. Every penny helps. Uh, it goes back into production of Disclosure tonight. Ah, oh, there is viewer Colin. Where is it at? Where'd it go? Ah, oh, there's Mike. I found you, Mike. Yep. Good enough. There we go. There we go. Except I have to take the viewer call in, move that up a bit, and move this back. All right, and find myself. Where did I take myself? Bring No, that's not it. I know, folks. We're having fun. Got to do it on the fly. No stress. <laughs> Here's my camera. There I am. Boom. And then there's the chat text. Can you with me, chat? We're fine. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, let's get into our next email to what we're seeing here. <coughs> okay, it looks like I have the logistics arranged. Which days work better for you? Uh, all right, so this is... This is from the DOD IG. This is a new one. Going with other people within the DOD IG. And subject, non-DOD source, forward UAP interview and OI, Office of Inspector General contact information. So this is dated June 3rd, 2021. And it's fully redacted. Of course next, it is. The next one is from Lou Elizondo to multiple people, one, two, three, four people within the DODIG. Four people. Uh, looks like I have logistics arranged. Which day works better for you? What time is best? My attorney and I will accommodate your schedule. So this is clearly Lou Elizondo reaching out to uh, the DODIG to confirm him coming in with Danny Sheehan. Yes. We're about halfway through this, Doc. Let's take a look and see here. All right, so the next one is coming from Lou Elizondo again. Uh, okay, now that's next one is sent from Yahoo, mail on Android, DODIG... Not a problem. We can be flexible. Don't rush your account. Our account. This project will take some time. Not sure who it's coming from. Sent from Yahoo Mail. All right, we have another one from Louis uh, Lou Elizondo. Doing my best to accommodate. Please stand by, Lou. Sir, I am look. I'm currently looking at my calendar. So, again. Emails, trying to get confirmation of Lou coming in for his testimony. Lou, this is still pretty open, around 1,300. Uh, That's 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock on Tuesday the 15th or Thursday the 17th. Will that work? Uh, we have a set of questions. We'll have a set of questions by then, but want to be sure we give you time for anything we didn't think to ask you about or the questions. Uh, you think are important for us to know. Moose, don't scare the duck. All right. Uh, next one. Forward UAP interview and Office of Inspector General confirmation and contact information. Again, confirming the dates. So with more emails just regards to lose going and testifying. Let's get else into this here. Uh, more from... Someone and someone to uh, Randolph Stone in the DOD IG and someone else in the DOD IG, which they're hiding. Uh, subject, greeting slash update, sir. Uh, this is greeting slash update, sir. Apologies for not uh, seeing you this month, but blah, blah, blah. I will try 
uh, sometime in the late September to meet again with your investigators slash audit auditors at a time of their convenience. Uh, in the meantime, uh, though you might be uh, find the link the below link interesting. As a result of a recent FOIA request, it appears that the Pentagon public affairs officer is still publicly publicly stating, I had no assigned responsibilities for a tip during my time at OSUD. Gee, Mike, who could this be? Wow. It's Lou. Oh, yeah, that, uh, yeah no, I, of course it's Lou. I know. But they redacted who it's from. Susan Goff, because that's who was saying he wasn't assigned any duties. I remember from back no, then. No, no, no. This is the person. In the meantime, I thought you might find the below link interesting. As a result of a recent FOIA request, it appears that the Pentagon PAO is still publicly stating that wouldn't be Susan Goff saying that about herself. No, he's reporting this to the uh, DODIG. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, clearly they still do not acknowledge my role. And addressing the public in this manner is disingenuous because it appears that I had no responsibilities at all. Hopefully during, uh, during your efforts, you have, um, you'll have a much more clear picture by now. Well, here's the thing. Thank you very much, Susan Ford. Uh, here's the thing. Stephen Greenstreet Street, today, yesterday, in the last day or so. Thank you very much, Susan Ford, for that wonderful super chat. Fourteen ninety nine Australian. Oh, it's not coming up. It should be. Oh, there we go. Click on it over here. Thank you very much, Susan. I appreciate that. Wow, love you too, my dear lady. So back to this thing again. Sorry, ADD here. Um, Stephen Greenstreet. And even John Greenwald from the Black Vault is still saying today that Lou Elizondo, uh, Jeremy Rice from Alien Scientist, they all d debate and all claim Lou is a liar. He never worked at ATIP. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's He's letters. He's a disinformation agent. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Yeah. That's what they've been claiming. We should know that by now. It's all just bullshit. Oh, obviously. Some of the stuff that's there, and that's all right. Let's get through it. So eventually this will get fixed. Brian? Yeah, so do you think that they're going to retract their statements now that we've got uh, data-backed emails that back up lose claims and everything else? I mean, they they should go on there and publicly retract what well, they're saying. It, it just shows that Lou has been pointing out this disinformation campaign has been going on for years. And it's just part of that same freaking game that the military is playing as they amp up and ratchet up and rethink what disclosure is not going to be these days. You know, and I have to say, you know what I'm going to blame why there is this change in mind of what we're potentially going to do? I'm going to blame it on the executive branch. Let's blame, <laughs> let's blame it on the presidency. Let's blame the it on the executive not. branch. I think that's fair. Yeah. So do I. Yeah. But but good for Lou for fighting back, by the way. Oh, yeah. He needs to. And his book is going to open up another chapter in what's going on. But interesting to see they're watching all the different things of what he's doing. There's, and, you know, Lou said this. They're watching everything that he's possibly saying, every article that goes out, even in the new... Uh, documentary that he's going to be Lou's going to be involved in later this year. Lou's watching every single word that he's saying now. He's not watching what other people are saying if they're crossing the line. But Lou knows what to do not to cross the line, right, Mike? Oh, absolutely, he does. Yeah, he wrote the book on it. Oh yeah, right. Uh oh, so he he'll be all right. Oh yeah, they're not going to get him. Oh, and, and if I may too, um, go, go ahead, Brian. It's, you know, this show is monitored. We know that. Every time Rick brings up something that may be slightly outside of the lines or, 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 or something he probably shouldn't have said, he comes on and says, well, I got visited or called by such and such agency, too. You know, the, this stuff happens all the time, and they try to keep all these people in line. And I think it's a shame. 
um, that they do that. Now, we don't want to give away a national secrets, and that's fine, but we don't need to be hiding the existence of these things. Right. It's that old adage that we've all heard. We know there's a nuclear bomb. Yep. We don't have to tell you how to make it. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. I think actually Moose has to go. Moose was just telling me the ducks are by the back door and they need to be fed. <laughs> he was sitting there putting his paw on the bird food for the ducks and I went over there and looked. Sure enough, well, Moose, stay out of there. Got to have fun with it. Let's get into the next thing. Yeah, so the next piece we've got coming in here. Hey, Moose, come here. Say hi. Come here, you little fireball. Say hi to everybody. There you go. Okay. Be a good boy. All right, let's move on. Let's get through this and have fun when we're going on it. All right, next one. From Randolph Stone again. Suggest non-DODIG source greetings updates. Hey, Lou. Hey, Lou, good to hear from you. Redacted. As I mentioned earlier in, uh, earlier in my... As I mentioned earlier... My, my, fo folks my folks can't, can't with help with this, the administrative uh, complaint. complaint. Yeah. Why, why was folks, his people, got it? But the evaluation into UAP is progressing. So the DOD IG can't help with... Administrative complaint. Lou Elizondo's administrative complaint. But they can... The investigation into UAP from the DODIG is continuing. Okay. Right. We'll figure out the next one. Next one coming in. All right. Greetings, updates. Sir, apologies for not seeing you this month, but blank, 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 redacted. I will try for some time in late September to meet again with your investigators and our auditors at another time convenience. In the meantime, I thought you might follow the below link as a result of a recent FOIA request. It appears that Pentagon, oh yeah, they're still talking about Susan Goff. Goff like a cough, like you want to get rid of it. Let's move on. Right. Getting through this, cranking through it. Next one again is non-DODI source, Goss 22 International UFO Congress. November 4th, 2021, blank, blank, nothing and nothing. Interesting to say the least. Let's move on from that. I think we're getting near the bottom of this. Good. Yeah. Eat one I, Take it. Absolutely. Don't, don't eat the bird food. There you go. Okay, here. There we go. Let's get through this. All right, International Congress coming through. You need to subscribe to get her. All right, this is just junk mail they're getting. And then there's the Extreme Mente, 22nd International UFO Congress. Uh, it's in Italy. So I'm not sure if Lou is going to be there or not. Uh, probably a little surprise to you. Pentagon forms a group to examine unexplained aerial sightings. The announcement follows the report that failed to clarify strange phenomena observed by military pilots and others. Uh, this is the New York Times article, November 24th. So this is them watching over the original New York Times article that came out. Makes sense. And we have another one, I am, I am a MFR on Lou Elizondo, December 2017. Uh, that's another one on the same date, I think, as the, uh, it's a PDF of the article itself. All right, so the next one is from two P, uh, one person, the DODIG, to Michael Rourke. Michael Rourke, uh, someone in the DODIG, Randolph Stone again. We've heard his name many times. A couple other people who they're not going to let us know. Michael Zula, another person we don't know. Another person we don't know with a bunch of other people. So there's a bunch of people at the DODIG. Apparently get emails. We're not going to figure out who they are. All right, this is the next one is talking about the Hill. Ex-officials voice deep concerns over new Pentagon UFO unit. December 2nd, 2021. An, an article from the hill so interested in everything that lou has got his hands in 
although today they're still denying everything. Not ready to bring it out, it seems, Mike. No, obviously not. And I believe uh, Senator Harry Reid made a public statement confirming that uh, Lou Elizondo was, in fact, in charge of ATIP. And oh, yeah. now the DOD, instead of dealing with that information directly from the late senator, they're still pushing the narrative that he had no assigned duties. Mm -hmm. So nothing has really changed in all that time from then to now. Well, there's a lot of stuff that's not changing. We're getting a lot of regurgitation of the same information coming out of, out of uh, Congress. What is it? What is one of those we have? There's going to be a hearing for UFOs <laughs> sometime this year. At least one. Okay, so we've got a hearing coming at least once this year. Now, and there's another quote of Anna Polina now saying that there were bodies, although it was clarified before she wasn't. Uh, back and forth, flip back and forth. And we've got, there's been a lot of stuff with uh, Tim Burchett out there with regards to, um, where are we at? Tim Burchett talking about that aliens and UFOs are in the Bible. Which he's been saying that for a really long time, hasn't he? Specifically about UAP or UFOs being in the Bible. Yeah. He mentioned Ezekiel and the wheel. Yeah. When I, he's when bringing I up some other different areas, and it's interesting to hear him going to bring this stuff out. But it's, it's, we're getting promises of hearings. We're getting, you know, same kind of stuff. So we're hearing like, a, what, you want more cookies? I got two dogs here saying yes, they want cookies. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're here during an election cycle in Washington, D.C. for this year between the executive branch and various uh, local and state uh, seats. Washington is not, I repeat, not going to make this topic a priority for the remainder of this year because of all the activity in Washington right they now. They could, potentially, but right now, don't hold your breath. Oh, absolutely. I, we want to be positive and upbeat and hope something could magically happen, but in the meantime, don't hold your breath. Yeah, half glass full, half empty kind of thing. Yeah, or glass is half full. Or a mix of both. Yeah. Depending on how you look at it. Yeah. But listen, Lou said it, and it's still true today is when he said it back then. This is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Be patient. Oh, my God. I had AVM. AVM, I, AVM, I love you. I love you, my friend. But he's saying, oh, yeah, this is going to at least take 10, 10 years. And he was like, 10 more years? Are you fucking kidding me i was hoping 10 years from when it started back in 2017 that'd be nice right so let's be clear with the messaging that if people can sometimes misinterpret what we're saying so my clarification is that we're saying during this election cycle year we don't expect much because of what's going on with the election that's not saying that it's never going to move forward, that it's going to take 10 years or longer to get any word on this ever again. No, all we're making points about is we're currently in an election cycle yeah. for this year. That's it. Yeah. That's all we're saying. We're Talking saying about you're never going to hear anything again. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> we have a better chance to close our border than we do to get a information about aliens to come forward my god neither of which are attainable right now but you gotta look at one as think one's more realistic than the other did you hear about finland no what about they have permanently permanently closed their border with russia because they had what? 900 people from africa and other continents being shoveled through by russia so they closed it off and pushed them all back said nope you're not going to bring in shove start shoving people over our gates because they had that one instance of 900 people coming in they permanently closed their border with Russia because they were accusing wow. Russia of letting all these migrants into their, con to, into their country to go ahead and stream in to Finland. 
Doesn't that sound wow. familiar? We just have to replace Finland with the United States and Mexico with Russia. Right. Yeah. But that goes against the company, the uh, our country's charter, where the uh, the land of the free, and or a, a nation formed of immigrants. So we really can't yeah. close our borders, but we should regulate them better. Yeah, but we're not also a social state. We don't no. tax like it. If, you know, if we're going to be a social state, we have to increase our uh, income tax from the federal government to 50 or 60 percent at least. Well, isn't it in England as high as what, 80, 90 percent or I, Canada? I don't know. I could not answer on that. I think Michael Sekulov was talking about that. They have high tax rate because of all the social services oh, they have to pay for. High tax rate. You want to talk about high tax rates? Canada. Their food has gone up between two to three times in the last two to three hundred percent in like the last year or so. Their gas, their gas for their vehicles just had a twenty three percent uh tax added to it. Federal tax. Oh, that's that's ridiculous. Twenty three percent. No. Yeah. That no no way. That that'll start a civil war. People will start oh, rioting. Well, welcome to Washington State. We have the highest gas <laughs> we have the highest gas taxes in the country. <laughs> You know, we're pushing $5 a gallon right now for super unleaded, almost. I heard it was higher in California. Is it? Well, let's take a look at the, let's take a look at the Costco app. Let's go ahead and check. Will it give you uh, gas prices oh, in different oh, states? Oh, heck yeah. Let's, oh, che let's check in uh, Seattle. Seattle is four thirty nine for regular and four ninety five okay. for for unleaded. If I go down to Portland, where Neil's from, four oh nine for uh, regular, four fifty one for premium. And if we go down to California, let's check down in uh, Nevada, Calif Nevada, California. Up, oh, they're not going to have it there. Here we go, San Ladrino. Uh, no, San Leandro, uh, Leandro, Leandro, San Leandro, San, San Leandro, San Leandro. Yes, San yeah. Leandro, near San Francisco. Correct. Sir. Four ninety five yeah. for regular, five nineteen oh for super. Wow. If I go down to Los Angeles, let's go down. Correct. Correctly said. Correct. <laughs> All right, Los Angeles, four ninety two for regular, five nineteen for super. Now, one thing that was interesting, I saw there was a place near Chicago, uh, Bartlett, Illinois. It was like three sixty five a gallon for regular, but it was like ninety cents a gallon more for super and limited. I've never seen such a huge variance between the two numbers before. Yeah, it's hitting. That's stuff. ridiculous. That's I know. too much. Yeah. Cost of life is is high everywhere. Kelly Broad is saying it's three twenty five on Long Island. That must be nice. Let's go check. I haven't checked New York. Let's check New York. What the heck? Go into it. Long Island. Yep, three oh nine for regular, three eighty five for premium. That's in Comac. Comac. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Nateless says two beaver pelts and a flask of maple syrup for only yeah. three gas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why is East Coast getting all the bargains? Well, I think it's because there's a president there's president on the East Coast, but more importantly, I don't think they have to put all the different additives and stuff <laughs> they put into the gas on the West Coast. And we have specific formulations for the West Coast, so it's produced in a tighter supply from at least a lesser amount of refineries. So I believe the price may be a little bit higher on the West Coast. Just yeah, the regulations. Yeah, you make a good point. Yeah, has it, has it always been that, that like such a big difference? Yeah, and huh. the gas, and the, plus we have a lot more taxes on our gasoline. I know from Washington State, we definitely do. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Absolutely, uh, Brian. Brian and Mike, take it for one second. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, yeah. We got yeah. It. I don't know if you guys will indulge me for two seconds. I want to read one paragraph. Um, Michael J. Rourke was one of the people mentioned in the, Lou's emails that was unredacted. Correct. Um, that he was a, a part of the DOD Inspector General's office. What did you find out about him, Brian? 
Exactly. Right. Well, just on his bio here, and I'll be real quick with this. He was the acting uh, deputy inspector general for intelligence and special programs assessment. We've okay. heard this before, the ISPA. Provides oversight over uh, the full spectrum of programs, policies, procedures, and functions of the intelligence and counterintelligence enterprises, special access programs, nuclear enterprise, and related security issues within the Department of Defense. So that's that's basically his bio, and 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 you know they lump the nuclear in with the counterintelligence and everything else. So basically, um, you know he's what one of those people that we've always uh, suspected that will run the counterintelligence ops as well as hide things under the uh, um, the nuclear side of things. Right. So let me ask you this: How long was he? in the DOD IG's office. When did he start? I've got him going back to 2011. Okay. Um, uh, no, so at 2011, he was the director of Joint and Southwest Operations, a director at uh, the DOD. Uh, it looks like approximately 2013. So he was only there, what, two years? So this, the, the paragraph that I read was from 2018. Now, I don't know if he's still there or not, um, but that was April 23rd, 2018, was when he was with ISPA, the, the, when he was acting a Deputy Inspector General for Intelligence and Special Programs Assessment. That was 2018. Yeah. Because the uh, emails that we were just covering on the show, I believe the the, the re most recent day was 2021. So yeah, he's still there. But you said he started back in 2011. Well, on his bio, and I was briefly reading it, but that 2018 one, that was the one I read. It was from 2018 when 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 he was that that deputy. Yeah. So so you're right. He's been there for for quite a few years now, Mike. You know, Mike, I think we stuck a I think we struck a nerve with our audience. Why? What do you mean? Everyone is still talking about the gas prices. Oh, I see that. <laughs> Worldwide. Yeah, no, Andy's right. Well, it, it, gas, gas prices, prices are uh, gas prices are affect our day to day life a lot more than UFOs do. Oh, they do. Right, including Malcolm? the cost of everything that we pay for on, on the shelves. Everything. Everything. Right. The cost of food, clothing, delivery, everything. Yeah. Let's see this. I'm going to figure this out really quick. Yeah, that was very good. Anyway, great conversation tonight. I think we've covered everything into this one piece. I just want to come on tonight, go ahead, and we have one good topic we could go ahead and talk about tonight. And I think we covered it. Yeah, I believe we did. It was fun. And yeah. We kept it quick and tight yeah. and covered the, the gist of it and tomorrow night and tomorrow night uh, yeah we are going to talk about those mummies oh god uh, well let me see if i can go ahead and i've got one of the ones that's saved here uh, not that uh, it was it was really great to see the all right all right, I'm going to get in trouble for doing this, but I'll do it. And I'll hate myself, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, it, it's a shit show. Yes. But it's such a good yeah. shit show. Even the Department of Ministries from uh, uh, Peru is coming in and trying to shut down the freaking presentation. Now, this is the first time they've done that, which is real interesting to me. Uh, did you see that one, Mike? Yes, I did. They're really getting tired of this shit. But, so I got but, a big but, but, I that. have to. Okay. There's one. Let's just watch this one little clip here of it. It's a spectacle. You know, it's like a train wreck or a really bad looking tranny. You can't stop looking at it. Did oh. you actually go out looking like that? <sighs> All right. Let me go ahead and get to this one. All right. Remember, we, we have had Cheryl. Uh, cost on here before. She is the first person who coined the word tranny, and she loves the word. So don't, 
fighting for it, folks. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get into desktop. All right. We'll go to the old, uh, the old person TV. I'm not sure who this video was from. I don't want them to go ahead and freaking spank me on it. So let's just go ahead and do that. Bring this Bay down use. a little bit more. But then I need to go to the video that's in the background. No, that's not it. And I need to go to the chat capture. No, no, no we're almost there. Uh, uh, media source, where is it at? TV scan lines, 324K. Transform. There we go. I flipped it horizontal. That'll make it a little bit easier for this stuff. So now we can go ahead and show it. Scan lines. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't do it that much too much. All right, she's going to come on in a minute and talk about it. Let's just hear it, and we'll go through it. All right, let's play this. Good morning. I'm sorry for the interruption. We're doing a preventive action with the Ministry of Culture with the specialized... Uh, we need to make sure people can hear this. Make sure on. Police of yeah, uh, cultural patrimony. In regards, with the exception of the... Tridactyl Nasker uh, bodies. You know that the minister, the public minister, we protect all of these uh, objects, and we want to know who is responsible of the event, or who custodies all of these beings, especially of uh, cultural patrimony. So they're stepping in. They're like. Who's running this? Who's got the stuff coming? We're serious about it. We don't want this to go on. So they think the bodies are going to be there, but the thing is the bodies have already been someplace else, and they've already done their conclusive testing on them. So this is just something to talk about the event that went on. This, you are... I'm going to raise a suit. With all of this information that you're being giving us here, these bodies are going to be presented here. Please, can you please take a seat? No, I, I cannot be here with you. I'm going to uh, rise the lawsuit so that uh, we can make a custody of, of these uh, cultural patrimony. It's a custody that according to our, to our laws, according to... Now, I, I see some people are leaving, but here's one of the results. And people said, oh my God, it's the freaking aliens down in Mexico again. No. It's different this time. It's different. And I want to show you this one because it's different. Can't say it enough times. It's different. It's different information. It's different stuff being brought forward. Yes, Jaime Musan is there, and he is probably one of the most, well, interesting people in disclosure, let's call that. Part of the people that need to be burned on the ground, as Luis Elizondo called it. Let's go ahead and bring this up. So this is a video of a CAT scan of one of the aliens. Let me put myself off to the side here so people can see this better to go on top of the back chat for a time being. Okay, let's do undo this. Check this out. Just check it out. Is it real? Is it Memorex? Is it real? Is it not real? Now, the biggest thing, it, this one looks pretty good. This doesn't look like the other little e things that look like ET that were going around. This one is they're going to spin it this way. Now, the, the feet are like the feet, really the legs, man. the elongated skull. Now, the two things we need to do to determine if this is truly an elongated skull individual and not something that was concocted together. The bones right back here, and I'm talking about the axis and the orbit, 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 orbit. The axis and the orbit, C1 is at the very base of your skull. It's actually a round bone at the top of your spinal cord. The next bone below, uh, below at the access is actually another one, and it has like a, a stick sticking up through the center, and it's kind of 
within that particular sphere of what you're looking at. I know mine, mine's off balance and it's get, get in a car accident once and it'll follow you for life. Now, in addition to those bones being different, how are they different? They're also very different. Well, isn't the hole that goes into the, the, the bottom of the, the skull, isn't it's that a, in a different position? Yes, than ours? that's right. where I was and trying to get this. This bone, where it is, is in a different place than actual humans. Wow. Okay. So, so this... I don't, I haven't looked at this yet. Interesting. To see whether or not it's different on here, but that's going to be the smoking gun. And that was one of the things I had asked in on Twitter today. What was Brian Forrester's? Now, the other part... Also, there shouldn't be any brain sutures, any stitches in the skull. There, uh, the, sag the sagittal line. The, right. right. The, um, the real ones. And we're not... It's hard to tell any. on that angle. Let's see if they get it going around. Here we go. There's no sagittal suture showing up. There's none of them showing up which is weird. You, if, if you don't have the one coming up here, there should be another one near the crest in the back where you have it. Right. So that's lending even more credibility to this. But no, we're not seeing either of them. Well, they don't, they don't have them. No, well, the, they have, the, the they don't have the one going up the center of the head, but they right. have the ones in the back part of the skull. Right. Right. The sagittal okay. suture is the one that goes like from between the nose up this way and where that, the soft where the soft flat would be on a right, right 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 exactly so we don't see either of those in this so that's a great point to go ahead and bring up so a couple things to look at are those two pieces but looking at this well i mean it looks like it's a regular nothing like in here we go we can actually go down and see there we go They've actually got it because it is a CT scan and it's not completely high resolution, but you can see it going through where it's going down frame by frame, you know, layer right. by layer by layer. So those look at those, look, those toes and fingers should look very like they should make sense. Right now each layer. Right. But here's the, the thing. Layer. We haven't, I don't know if we've seen complete skulls of these. Now, one thing that's of interesting note that I've seen on some of the uh, videos from Brian Forrester is the teeth are different. At least I saw that in the one baby one where the baby was kind of small and had the really big molars and bigger teeth and something with the eye teeth in there. You know, I'm not seeing an eye tooth in this one. You know, the fangs. Right. Oh, for some, yeah. For some right. reason, it's not there. Interesting. Interesting. So, you know, even Gary Nolan was talking about this. We well, need this to see evidence. Better. We need to see numbers. We need to see things that are coming up. We need to see actual results, and then we can go ahead and comment on it. Now, they did have some people there that were going and and talking at the conference. Um not much. You know, this is the kind of stuff we'll, we'll cover tomorrow night. I just wanted to jump into this to a little bit just to go ahead and say, yeah, we're aware of it. This is the one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. If the, st if the old stuff about Lou didn't pop up and when stuff pops up about Lou and everything, I like to cover it and give the guy a fair shake because you know that John Greenwald is not going to be talking nicely about Lou at all. Oh, Thomas, is there? Uh, do you have a link for the um, resignation letter? Um, that you could yeah oh uh, yeah um let's see if i no i don't have it here let's see if i i think i got it from um after the show if you put it if you put it in um the back chat um i'll go ahead and comment on the show and i'll put that link in uh, a comment yeah. in the section for yeah. everybody yeah all right let me see if i can find this uh don't give up just take needed breaks yes tom king i'm not going to give up my friend don't worry about it uh i had uh phase will saying when is the next show no oh. tomorrow friday oh i know we got it we got another show going on tomorrow but there was something else i was going to bring up here oh yeah from uh tim senior the the link that uh he sent me over from uh the black vault the actual not the youtube store but the Black Vault website. 
Let me go ahead and share that in the chat for everybody. I'll share that in the back chat for those that are there. And I will go ahead and throw this in a regular chat for everyone who's paying attention. There you go. Both places. And of course, thank you to John Greenwad for sharing the piece of information with us. And thank you for sitting on it for freaking close to two years. <laughs> Unless you just brought up old stuff to talk about again. Tim, you got me on this one if you did, but if this is old stuff, but either way, we had a fun time talking about it. A bunch of people we did. Came, a bunch of people came to hang out and talk about it for that matter. On that note, on that note, we got to talk some about the mummies. I'll have more stuff about this. And yes, this is different from the shit we saw before. This actually looks like potentially something from elongated skull. We just have to go ahead and compare it. And if that's the case... I don't know if we've seen a complete body from the elongated skulls because a lot of the stuff that the Peruvian government has, they do lock up. Obviously. Yeah, they but do. But if there's tissue on it, I don't know why they can't simply do a DNA test. Of course That'll they can. clear this up one way or the other. Yeah, of course they can. But I think there's another one that they had that was a female or something, and it was missing its head. So they were doing DNA tests only from that one because they didn't want to desecrate the bodies. Well, and for scientific pursuit, I think they should take a small sample and do a DNA test. Yeah. Just to give us an answer. And it share right it out the bullshit. with the public worldwide. Don't keep it locked up until the peer-reviewed papers are approved. Put it out there for right. the public record for people to figure it out even before it goes peer reviewed. At least that's what I would say. Open source it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I absolutely on that note, let's go ahead and jump back in the studio. All right, my great evening, great everybody. I appreciate everyone coming in the back. I appreciate everyone in the audience. More importantly, I'm gonna go ahead and thank the people who threw out some super chats tonight. Uh that would be uh Phase Will. I have not to have this set up right for 20,000. Yeah, I do. Faze Will, thank you very much for that super chat. And none of your business. Two people from the back. I appreciate your love and support of everything disclosure tonight. And as we usually say, Mike, thank you for coming out here tonight. And I thank everyone else in the back for coming out. Oh, it was uh, another fun show for everybody. We covered a little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit of a smorgasbord. I agree. It was fun. I haven't had one of those in a while. Or a buffet. God, you know how many years it's been since I've seen the buffet? Yeah. <laughs> I hear there's one on YouTube has a channel. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's more of a dumpster fire than it is a buffet you actually want to go and eat at. Let's be real about that one. But actually he was actually throwing shade at someone else for being fat. He was yeah. fat shaming. He always accused me of fat shaming him. But he was he was really mean in what he was saying about someone. Even more mean than I've been. Yes, exactly. Direct and to the point. But he did get All paid an hourly wage therapy. for being there a whole whop, whopping $15, not even? At $15 no, an no, hour, so it's like 10 bucks, right? Five bucks? <clears throat> yeah, 10 bucks. Prorated, I heard. Yeah, exactly. That tells you it's below minimum wage. It tells you what his time is actually worth. Oh, if you take all the time that I put in disclosure tonight, and you take out all the money that was plopped into equipment and different things to make this live stream happen. You know, I make, oh, God, I, I haven't even done the math. Probably well under $3 an hour. <laughs> Super chats are nice and everything, but it all adds up. It does, quickly. Oh, I know. Time is money. Oh, I know. But you got to have fun with it. Got to have fun with it. And as Mike, thank you for coming out. Thank you for the Super Chats, everybody. And as we usually say, we'll be here back tomorrow. 6 p.m. Yes, Pacific. we will. Friday night disclosure. Can't miss that. Uh, but as things pop up throughout the week, we'll pop up for an hour, talk about stuff. Hour and 15 minutes. I know it's not hard. easy. It's easy to do that. So, But as we usually say at the end of every episode, oh, I can't say it yet. I can't say it yet. Where is it at? I've got to go out here in the right kind of a style. No, almost there. Mm -hmm. And as we usually say at the end of every episode of Disclosure Tonight... Sound effects loud. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. But go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. We'll catch you on the flip side. Good night, everybody. Love you. I'll come back now. Here. See you soon. Bye-bye.